until very recently Africa was out of global spot. However, what takes place today in that part of the world, within the next few years, will determine international politics and within the next few decades, global economy. A little while ago, extraordinary employment potential ambassador of Italy, Luca Tanasia, and captain of Carabinieri Victoria Yovacacci were killed in an attempted abduction in the Republic of Congo. Quite disturbing is that both of them traveled as part of armed and well-protected UN convoy, but it turned out this wasn't enough to protect their lives. It's still unclear for what reason Luca Tanasia went to highly dangerous eastern part of Congo if he knew how risky and unpredictable it is. Worst fears come true as car of Italian diplomatic mission was attacked with the aim of kidnapping the ambassador and his entourage for ransom. The attack did not went according to the plan, and as a result, the ambassador and the carabinieri officer were killed, leaving Rome wondering whether or not they are acting right in that region. It is important to know why Italians, French, and other Europeans need Africa, and in particular, Republic of Congo. First, Congo is extraordinarily large. It is actually larger than all Western Europe countries combined. France historically has monstrous political and economical influence in their former colonies like Algeria, Tunis, Mali, almost all of Western and a half of Equatorial Africa, and even Morocco, which for a while was under French protectorate. In general, there were numerous colonizers in Africa, Holland, Spain, Portugal, Britain, and the same France. Germans and Belgians ruled there too. Italy had so-called Italian North Africa since 1934, called Libya. Tripolitania, a small area in northwest of Libya. Cyrenaica, Fezzan, Eritrea, and Italian Somalia, now part of Republic of Somalia. Congo is in the center of Equatorial Africa, and the northern part of this country were once under French control, while Italians, a decent province close to Uganda and Rwanda, where different kinds of armed groups have been ruling for decades. In recent years, the European Union has been actively increasing its influence in Africa, and the main reason for this is, of course, Africa's resources. However, Europeans are far from having a positive image for locals, as they remembered only for genocide of locals, stealing their resources, and after the liberation movement, leaving Africa bare ass. Today the population of Africa is close to 1 billion and by 2050 there will be more than 2.4 billion if not taking any urgent economic measures. Tens and hundreds of millions of young Africans sooner or later will be in Europe. In fact Africa has nearly an exhaustible amount of resources and only very small parts of Western, North and South Africa were yet explored. The rest is still terra incognita for geologists, almost no one doubts there is a real Klondike there. Even Chinese came to Africa, however, showed themselves as tolerant nationalists and racists. Secondly, China did nothing for the development of countries they came in, as even ordinary employees at Chinese enterprises were flown from China. Russia also began its expansion in Africa. Somewhere it sent military instructors, somewhere it started trade and economic projects and partnerships. Today, Central African Republic, the south and east of Libya, Mozambique, under tight Russian control. In many Mozambican ports, the Russian fleet has its own bases and material service points and can at any time enter to reload supplies. From May 27, 2018, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Russia unexpectedly revived the agreement of military technical cooperation concluded under Yeltsin back in 1999. Adhir almost resolved the issue of creating a full fledged Russian naval base in Sudan, and you get a completely different picture. Russians came to Africa and came here for long. Our cooperation with African countries can be seen in the Central African Republic. The West became very anxious after March 30, 2018, when Central African Republic at the stadium at the capital city of Bangui celebrated the second anniversary of Faustin Auchan's Tour de Han presidency. The president arrived at the stadium once built by French, accompanied by white cards and camouflage uniforms without insignia. Formally, the protection of such events was carried out by Rwandans from the remnants of the UN peacekeeping force in the Central African Republic, but a week earlier, previously unknown but well armed and well organized white men had replaced Rwandan patrols in the streets of the city. Soon it became clear that mysterious white guards protect presidential administration, the president's garage, armored vehicles, have a limited access to his movements and to key figures for Joe de Haas and Roche. White patrols appeared on the streets of Bangui. European looking advisors now were spotted in Central African Republic military units, not only in the capital. 
French, who have historical responsibility for former colonies, began to ring the bell, and then President Tour de Hall gave an official announcement. Tour de Hall's administration announced that from now, there is a division of Russian special forces to strengthen security of the President. A new position appeared in the structure of presidential administration, security director, Russian military officer, who is also responsible for the work of group of bodyguards. French claimed that the same officer is also a key intermediate for contacts between the Central African Republic and Russia in defense and in economical spheres. On March 31, President Tua de Ha hosted a parade of the first company of Central African Republic Army, around 200 people, which was completely re-equipped with Russian weapons dressed in Russian camouflage, while Russians also commanded the parade. An agreement on the Russian rearmament of Central African Republic Army was reached in October last year in Sochi during Tua de Ha's visit. He initially asked to prepare two battalions, one and a half thousand people, with portable firearms, grenade launchers, and armed vehicles. This required lifting United Nations restrictions on the supply of arms to the Central African Republic. A month later, UN agreed to partially remove these restrictions from Moscow, and in January 26, 2018, the first L-76 military transport aircraft landed in Bangui. Then, President Tua Ha and over American Ford cars worth one and a half million dollars to Russian contingent, causing a flurry of outrage in Trump administration. But at that moment, Trump was seriously busy with fighting Democrats, and as a result, these Russians again were unpunished. The example of Central African Republic may spread into whole Africa. Russian weapons are reliable, and Russian advice is not to use to teach local population real values. No, they act in a completely different way showing a striking contrast to so-called civilized countries and Russia. We may not see our expansion in Africa, but it is there, and shortly it will pay its dividends in the history of the development of this continent. Our military enter Africa first, ordinary, proud, honor and patriotic Russian guys, with shy smiles, calm and professional in any situation, true face of Russia. The local population these guys represent our entire country and values, and believe me, our boys behave themselves incomparably more honorably from all the other who came to this continent. Of course, we didn't notice this penetration just as we did not spot it in Syria in 2015, but you must admit today it's a completely different country, and our guys in military uniforms take all the credit for it. Russian military force show very clear what kind of country Russia really is by defending it all around the globe. They send the most important message Russia will never leave its allies in trouble. Russia has enough power and influence to put the opposing forces at negotiation tables and uses it, even where it seems generally unimaginable, for hostility has been waged for centuries and has ingrained into the genetic of people. If someone does not want to understand this, punishment will be immediate, extremely harsh and highly precise without offending civilians. As you might know, this is much appreciated in the Middle East and Africa. The name of this phenomena is justice the main feature that distinguishes our military from all the others. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell.